Hi everyone, my name is Charleston Castillo. And I'm Brooke Willen, and we'll be discussing Six Sigma today. Six Sigma is a process improvement methodology that became widely known when Motorola pioneered it in 1986. They implemented it in their manufacturing lines, however rapidly it became the company's culture. Following Motorola, dozens of businesses and other process improvement methods have implemented Six Sigma and its concepts as a way to curtail defects and increase productivity across many sectors, from customer service to manufacturing. Motorola was able to apply an idea that started in 1809 by Carl Gauss. Gauss introduced the bell curve, which is a statistical method to measure the variation of an event. The mean is located at the vertex of the bell, and the curve amount is determined by the standard deviation. A familiar example of a bell curve can be seen in school test results. The standard deviations indicate the frequency of the results. The steeper the curve, the more frequent certain results are seen. The Greek letter sigma is used to describe this variation. Each sigma from the mean puts a process farther from the most often seen result. Therefore, the process improvement method Six Sigma tries to control the variation so that the most acceptable performance is frequently seen. The reasoning for the six is that by the six deviation or a higher Sigma quality level, optimal reliability is achieved. The following slide shows a picture representation of this idea. In 1986, Motorola CEO Bob Galvin needed to combat challenges on its manufacturing line. Galvin's goal was to increase their components quality as well as customer satisfaction tenfold within five years. Quality engineer Bill Smith trademarked the term Six Sigma for Motorola and the, thus the initiative was pioneered. By not only implementing Six Sigma across all departments, the company also made their metrics sensitive. A term often seen in the process is defects per million opportunities or DPMO. By accounting for a million units, more accurate quality is determined. Each level of sigma is defined by its DPMO. Operating at six sigma places operations at nearly perfect product reliability, quality, and customer satisfaction, and diminishes time and costs. Five sigma is 99.98% defect free, and one sigma means 30.9% defect free. Galvin was able to produce his goals in two years instead of the proposed five. By the 1990, Motorola Six Sigma developed into a business of its own. Under its scope, there are certified belt levels that professionals can achieve through an accredited training. Dr. Mikkel Harry of Motorola created their naming convention of black, green, and yellow belts. Motorola sent their professionals to consult, educate, and implement Six Sigma practices for other businesses. In 1991, Allied Signal, now known as Honeywell, took on Six Sigma and saw the reward of cost savings within six months. Jack Welch of General Electric also embedded the method into the company's culture in 1995. Welch aimed for a goal of having 3.4 DPMOs and executed it. Today, Six Sigma is used within 53% of Fortune 500 companies and it has saved them approximately $427 billion. Some other companies using Six Sigma are Boeing, Raytheon, Dell, Amazon, and Northrop Grumman. In this picture, the mean shows 99.997% of defect-free products, and by the Six Sigma, the defects are 3.4 per million, which is still pretty good. It needs a process improvement, they can employ Six Sigma. It requires the identification of the variance and how to control that variance. Six Sigma goals can be incorporated into a company through the use of consultants and technology. Consultants play the role of process experts and data analysts. They learn the customer's needs, internal and external affairs, etc. The consultants are labeled by their belt type. Master Black Belt certified professionals are the team leaders of an initiative. They have been trained to be well versed in all the tools available and how to implement the method of Six Sigma to achieve a goal. They act as mentors to the black and green belts. Black belts focus on executing the project, whereas green belts are focused on the Six Sigma of a company as well as their own job. Representing the rest of the team are yellow belts. They must help the black and green belts achieve the initiative. After roles and expectations 
for personnel are outlined, a design of experiments, or DOE, is produced. Six Sigma reviews the controllable input factors and uncontrollable input factors and their respective responses. Most plans implement the DMAIC model to improve. This model is outlined in the next slide. Hershey actually made available their Six Sigma design in their many of their factories. In an article for an inbound logistics, Amy Partridge reports that Hershey created a value stream map for each manufacturing step. The goal is to eliminate the tasks that are not essential and to outline time goals for the tasks that were essential. Then a fishbowl, as you can see, of the summary of the DPMO was calculated for each function in their factory. The next step was a cause and effect matrix to look for variability. The final step was the failure scenario analysis to ensure the continuation of the improvements, intelligent mobile robotic drive units were introduced to the factory as well. Within four months, you could see that Hershey saw an 89% increase in their productivity. To make the factory leaner, there was even a 25% scale back of employees. However, it currently saves Hershey $45,000 a year in labor and current jobs are, eventually, are evenly spread. Going back to General Electric, their Six Sigma model from the 1990s had a big and continual impact. The CEO wrote a book in 2001 and claims that 100% of GE's medical systems revenue was from Six Sigma designs. And a report from 2011 says that their design has drove more than $10 billion of benefits and boosted operating margins 4% in four years. Okay. As you can see, this is the slide that um, shows the design for Six Sigma. These are a couple of the steps that Six Sigma has to target in order for their process to work. Um, as you can see, it goes from defining the customer requirements all the way down into implementing the controls. Six Sigma may be the most popular method by name, however, it does have some design alternatives. There is a concept of Lean Six Sigma, which was also developed by Motorola. It combines traditional Six Sigma and Lean manufacturing to eliminate waste and identify troubled areas of reduction, delays, processing, and logistics. Statistical process control is more of a statistical method, as the name suggests, that organizes production data by time, process, and defects. It's, it's a good indicator of where a company can optimize efficiency, but it's not as comprehensive as Six Sigma. Another famous approach that can be seen in several Japanese-based companies, as well as Beckman Coulter, is Kaizen. Kaizen is less of a numbers game and more of a mindset. With a particular job in mind, a case of improvement will identify the ways to increase production and productivity and decrease time and cost. An example of this can be seen on Beckman Coulter's manufacturing floor. The laborers have all the parts required for a product that they are building within a few feet. All similar products are grouped together so that no laborer needs to walk a ways away to retrieve their next part. Yellow and red card, color cards that indicate the stock level of the parts are kept in categorized bins with the part. When yellow is seen, it signals that the bin needs to be refilled soon. When red, when red a runner can grab the card that has the part number on it, go to the main house of the parts, retrieve the necessary amount to bring back, and this process improvement has saved the laborers time as well as money for the company overall. The last method is 5S which stands for Sort, Simplify, Systematic Cleaning, Standardize, and Sustain. It describes an environment where the workspace is organized for efficiency. The ultimate goal, like other, um, other methods, is to reduce waste in space while increasing production and workplace safety. Toyota, Toyota follows the 5S method. Each S has, has five levels of achievement. Level five dictates that a person unfamiliar with the area can still operate by retrieving an item within 30 seconds with minimal movement. It also proves that the method cannot have one S at a level five without the others also being at a level five. So it strives continuously for perfection. It is important to note that while there are different process improvement measures, a task does not need to be exclusively tackled by one method. Usually Six Sigma's tools can be mixed and matched with another process to help create a hybrid of improvements to better suit a company's goals. Six Sigma has both pros and cons. This here shows some of the examples of the pros using towards Six Sigma in different areas. The DMADV and the DMAIC methods 
are two methods that are strongly used in executing quality improvement methods throughout many different companies. Customer focus and clear performance metrics are also important to have in order to be successful in Six Sigma. As you can see in the next slide, um, there are other cons to Six Sigma, such as emphasis financial gains, as well as lack of structure when implementing Six Sigma. If you can see on the right, it also shows a little bit of suggestions on how to overcome those cons. As you can see in this slide, it shows three different levels that Six Sigma also represents. On the top, it has the strategic level, which is known as for the SWAT, the strategic and the balanced scorecard, as well as the different belts that Brooke was explaining earlier. In the process level, you have the DMAIC and the other method that we also explained. The performance that right now we are looking at is the methodology level, which is where the focus of the future of Six Sigma is actually going to. Right now they're trying to implement different management tools that can go ahead and be incorporated into the Six Sigma as well for the future. For our project, the contributions throughout us, we started and met three times throughout January once the project was given, and we split up the work between Brooke and I. Um, we basically did the abstract introduction literature survey, the background, the current design, and the future developments of us both and we both decided to work on the project, on the PowerPoint, as well as on creating the video.